This week's video is about the Griffin bandsaw. And I got this over two years ago at Macna, brought it home, never opened the box. And I thought, you know, I'm gonna do an unboxing video, and I never did. And then finally two weeks ago, I started fragging some corals for my tank because they were up on the glass, and I had to use it. So I broke it open, started using it, loved it, and said, I need to do a video on how great this saw is and get it up on YouTube. So that's what we're gonna see today. I'm also at one point gonna be adding it to my website if you decide you wanna buy it. Now, the good news is it's awesome. The bad news is it's expensive. Doesn't mean you have to own it, but I have done the thing where I used a $9 Dremel from Harbor Freight, and I kind of was okay. I've tried using bone cutters. I've tried using other tools to cut through corals, but this thing is like cutting through butter, and you're gonna see for yourself. Uh, I did some Googling, and the price is around $420 for this. So you would think I would have opened it way sooner, but I never frag corals. I keep them and grow them into giant colonies, and instead I had to make some space and so the saw got taken out of the box. When you open up the box, you're gonna find a series of parts inside. There's the actual main body that would hold some water. It has a pulley wheel in the bottom. And then the top has the motor with an on-off switch right in the front, easy to reach. And the cord follows behind it and can be locked into a spot so it doesn't get tugged on in theory. Quits putting pressure on the cord itself, which is always good, so it'll last a long time. This entire assembly goes up and down to adjust the right tension on the saw blade that we're gonna install in a moment. So I just want to show you how it goes in. It just fits right into the case. And you could take this off, clean this up completely, and then put this back in place when you're done. I also, when I washed it, I wiped in here with a wet paper towel because it would get some overspray in that area. Other than that, I didn't do much more. There's also a small little piece of uh, ABS plastic. And what it's doing is this will snap on the front in that corner and this is a little guide for the blade to ride in. So that just fits on the corner. You press it all the way up. And then there's another guide right here that you also embed in there and you're done with it. You have to get a couple of sponges wet. And one is going to fit right here. I just used some tap water just to dampen the sponge. And then the other sponge is going to go down inside under this wheel. So come closer so I can show you what that looks like. Okay, this is gonna go under the wheel and there's a little groove that fits down here. And what I've done is I insert it into the spot and I use the wheel to kind of tug it into place and now it's done. So you can see the little sponge is barely there in that spot. Note the height of that little tiny piece of plastic. That's important. The next step is adding the water and I take about this much tank water out of my system. This is a 32 ounce Gatorade bottle. And you, know, I can, you can tell I didn't use it all. You don't need a lot of water inside here. You just need enough to get to the, basically to the little bump that was inside next to the sponge. That's your visual indicator. Just pour it in. And I'd like to encourage you to avoid putting in a lot of water. You might think, well, I can add a couple inches of water and I can go all day. But when you add a lot of water, it's gonna create a splashing effect. When you have just a little bit of water, just enough to keep the, keep the blade damp, it works great. Now the blade has to be installed and there's a frontwards and there's a backwards. <laughs> so make sure when you install it that you put the diamond tip blade towards you or facing this direction. And the smooth part is gonna go in those two guides I talked about. So the way this works, I will just set it over the top wheel and then I'm gonna trick it under the bottom wheel. And it takes a little bit. It's gonna take me a few seconds here to do this. Okay, the bottom wheel is just right, so now we'll do the top wheel. And one of the methods of doing the top wheel is you can turn the wheel to kind of get it in place, but my motor is actually sitting low right now. And I'm gonna use a thumb screw on the back of this saw to raise the motor up to put tension on the blade. It's gonna take a whole bunch of turns. You don't wanna to put too much tension. You wanna have the right amount of tension. So what I discovered as I was using this 
and now my blade is actually in both spots, just exactly where I want them. Something that I discovered when putting this together is that this motor tilts, and it's tilting based on how much you tighten the thumb screw on the backside, which you just saw me adjust to get just the right tension on this bandsaw. However, if you over tighten it, what will happen is the motor will tilt this direction and the pulley will lean this way and it will make the blade wander right off. So instead you actually want it slightly tilting in that direction. So resist the urge to over tighten. Just get it just right. Do a test spin. Make sure the blade is staying where you want it, staying in the guides and you're good to go. If the tension isn't set correctly, it's going to flop all over the place and possibly even damage the blade. Take off that front cover, feed it onto the wheel so that it's set on perfectly, get it into those two grooves, and then adjust the proper height to create the proper tension. If you look closely at the little stopper at the top, as you adjust, you'll see how it leans back into the blade or it pulls away from the blade. And you want it to be just right in there with equal pressure. And in that case, the motor is going to be sloping slightly downhill. You can do the finger check and see if it stays where it belongs or if it's trying to pop out or if it'll stay in the groove where it belongs. Check at the top and at the bottom before you proceed. The next part is to put the side cover on, which would of course keep you safe and also the little bit of splashing that's going through there will stay inside. It's very minimal because there's only a little bit of water in here, maybe a quarter of an inch to half an inch of water. And then your workstation is carefully inserted around the blade and locked into place and now it's ready to go. I've moved the saw into the fish room uh, because I have concrete floors and if I make a big mess I don't really care, I can mop it up later. And I'm going to just turn it on so you can hear it, so you understand the sound level of this. I'll move my microphone closer to it, just so you get an idea. It's not crazy loud. And you can see there's a little bit of water dripping, and a little bit of water spattering here. That's not bad, right? Next, I need some corals if I'm going to demonstrate the saw to you. All right, so I've taken some corals out of the tank. You just saw that. And the first thing I want to tell you about corals, in case you don't know, is you have some time. They don't have to be submerged in water at all moments. They also can handle themselves out for a little while, even in a temperature that's not exactly the same as the reef. But I'm within about 15 minutes or so, I want them back in water. If you can do this in five minutes, even better. And with a saw like this, you definitely can. So what I've got here is a very large chalice. It's actually two chalices that grew together. You can see the frag plugs. And I'm going to show you what happens if I try and cut it with some bone cutters. And I'm going to show you how it looks like when I cut it with a saw. So here are some bone cutters. I've had these forever. They're actually my favorite, even though the tips are ruined because I've used it to cut into rock. But I, uh, for example, if I wanted to take a small piece off, let's say I wanted a one inch piece here. If I put my pliers on there and cut, it more like pulverizes. And now I have this piece of potato chip, which is still sellable, but it's not very pretty. And of course, if you leave it in your tank for a while, it'll heal. Now, it will slime a little from this effect. Wouldn't you? If someone just broke a piece off of you, you'd bleed. Same principle. Now, at this point, your frag can go into the tank. So we'll put it right here in a spot where no coral is. Excuse me, yellow tang. And that chalice could later be attached to a frag plug. But now we're going to use the saw, because that's the whole point of this video. And the reason you use the saw is for more precise cuts. Now, what I've been cutting so far has been very simple stuff. I haven't been trying to do anything creative. But if you wanted to cut Acan colonies, you would actually cut around each polyp, zigzagging through it. So I'm going to turn on the saw. And I could just cut this big boy in half and have two pieces. Because it started off as two pieces. So I'm just going to push it through very gently. and let the saw blade work its way through. I'm dropping all my tools. And now I have two chalices instead of one ginormous one. And I've got a friend who always jokes that everyone has tiny itty bitty chalices the size of a, you know, a quarter. 
and I grow these things into colonies that could of course be fragged or appreciated for what they are. Now you can see what it looks like where it's been cut. And you can see the actual stone, which it created itself because it had nothing. That was the frag plug. That's where it started. And it's been growing and growing and it made all this calcification on its own over the last couple of years sitting on the sand bed. Um, now at this point, I could cut this into multiple more pieces. Uh, something else to keep in mind when you're handling corals, you might actually have bristle worms on the bottom that could sting you or other critters. You might want to wear rubber gloves. I didn't put any on. I'm wearing glasses, but if I wasn't, I'd wear protective eye care. And another thing I want to tell you about, and I mentioned in a previous video before, when fragging corals, one of the most important things you should do is close your mouth. I've watched people frag corals and their mouth is hanging open. They're mouth breathing as they cut and they're just like, and what happens is you're inhaling the fumes from the corals, which could make you sick. It can get in your respiratory system. You want to avoid that. So close your mouth. It isn't that you can't breathe, but think and use wisdom. Don't put yourself at risk just because you're cutting up some corals. If you're going to be cutting a lot of corals for a long period of time, do it in a well-ventilated area. Uh, we'll go ahead and cut another piece off just because it's handy. And that way, if somebody wants a frag, I'll have one ready in my local area. I'm going to move this slightly. I think the vibration on the table is shaking everything off. So we'll cut another one real quick. And you can work up and down the blade. The nice thing about the 42-inch bandsaw is you have some height. And I'll show you why that's handy in a moment. Because this is very shallow. It would, you, a short blade would be fine for this. But I'm going to do something that's three-dimensional in a moment. And you'll see it. So we're going to cut off a small piece off of here. Remember I told you you could pivot it? Very gently turn so you don't pinch the blade. The one thing you don't want to do is back up and pull the blade out. It could tweak it. It could break the blade. I don't want to break my blade. It's too expensive. So now I've got a frag that totally is sellable just the way it is. It's got enough foundation. This would look great in someone's tank and they could grow it into something really beautiful. All right, put this in the tank. How about right here next to that Aptasia? You can see it's a little stressed. Maybe you can't see it, but there's a bunch of stuff come off of it. So that's normal and corals will slime when you're handling them. And you may have to come in 10 minutes later and kind of blow them off again if you don't have a lot of flow. Okay, these two corals are cut. I'm gonna set them aside. I think I'll throw them in the sump just to get them out of my way. And then I'll put them back on the main reef later. Here's a frag of a chalice that I cut last week on the bandsaw. Okay, now I talked to you about a three-dimensional cut. So I pulled out a hammer coral that's been in the bottom of my reef in the back being ignored for a long time. And it's self-fragging, look at that. So here's a frag right here, we're done. You can turn off the camera. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so here we've got several things happening. We've got some dead colony. We have a devil's hand coral. We have another devil's hand coral. And then we have some living tissue. So instead of keeping all of this ugliness in the tank, it's much better to break this up. Now again, I can show you with the cutters what it's like to cut through this colony through the uh, stony part of the LPS coral. And what'll happen is it'll usually crumble. It won't just cut cleanly. It'll just kind of shatter like that. So now we've gotten a sheared off piece instead of a nice clean cut. And at this point, you know, it may not matter to you, but it could have gone a different way. It could have shattered through and split all the way up the spine of this dead skeleton. Another thing you can do when you're working with corals, if you're around blue lighting, is you can put it near the light and kind of see where's the living tissue in case you get a little bit of snow blind, so to speak, and you cannot see which part is alive and which is dead. This is also a good time to notice if you have pests. And if there's a pest on here, like a Mahano anemone, you would cut that away and get rid of it so it doesn't go back in the tank or go to the next person that's getting this coral. So I'm gonna move this out of my way for a moment. And we'll, this guy here is actually three polyps that are alive. This is living, living, living. And then this down here is dead. So I can just cut this off very easily. And now at this point, this could be puttied to a rock and held right in place. You'd have a nice little colony growing right off your rock work. 
you could also split it right here in the middle. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna leave it together. I'm, someone's gonna want this and they're gonna like that there's three heads, so I'm not gonna cut it in half. You can, because it's been cut, shove it down into your sand bed to kind of keep it stable. I have an urchin in this tank. He likes to move everything around. Now we've got this other colony that has a leather on the side and I want the leather off of the rest of the coral. So I, this is all tissue here. This is all the leather. This is dead, <laughs> really dead. It's coming off of my hands. But the saw will make quick work of it and let me kind of isolate the actual coral I'm trying to keep. If you were to cut the leather, it's okay. Leathers can be fragged with a razor blade. If you needed a piece of this, you could snip off a piece, take a rubber band and connect it to a rock and have another frag for someone. And there's another piece I want to cut off because I don't like it. And there was either a living or dead snail. Not sure which. I see a starfish too. So I see a starfish I want to keep. I'm going to throw him in my frag tank and let him breed. Here's another one. I think I got him. <laughs> This leather is now ready for someone else. And you can always place them better in your tank. I'm just dropping it in here now because I'm busy filming a video. But you can get creative and get very specific. All right, what else? So we've got half of a dead colony, half a living colony. We're gonna come in here. I'm gonna cut it right through here. See the beauty of having such a tall blade? You can actually work with a tall frag. And this part here is completely dead. Incidentally, the aqua saw uses a total of 81 watts of power when it's running. And all the rest of this is alive. Some more than others. And this is kind of big to give someone. So you might say, look, I'm gonna trim off this part in the bottom. So it's a little cleaner. Do you see why now, why I like the saw so much? It's awesome. I wanted to make a point that when you're working with different corals on the same saw, it might be smart to change out the water in the saw so you're not contaminating one coral residue into another coral and possibly harming that coral. So if you're working with zoanthids, rinse it out, start fresh, run a Monty, rinse it out, cut up LPS, rinse it out, restart. And then I have one more coral. This was another piece of devil's hand that was stuck on two pieces of colony of the old skeleton, I should say, from the former colony because I allowed it to die in darkness. If your coral is on a rock and you have to cut through the rock itself, take your time and let the saw blade just very slowly cut through it. It'll make its way through if you don't press against it and snap that blade. And you can keep trimming if you want to get rid of every little bit of this. You could also just cut it. You could tear it. Tearing it might affect the coral, so I'm trying to avoid that and just leave the coral alone. Cleanup is really easy. All you have to do is rinse everything off and set it to dry. Just like anything else we clean with a tank, we just use water. You could soak things with vinegar if you wanted. You should have your tank only sponge, not use a sponge that had soap or anything on it, any kind of chemicals. So you'll pop off the workstation plate. Just rinse it off completely. Set it to dry. We'll slide this off. And you see it barely got anything, it's just moist. So it's not like it's a filthy item. Need to remove the blade. And to remove the blade, you're gonna lower the motor by twisting the thumb screw. I need to show you that thumb screw. I'm gonna turn this around for a second. You see, it's just a thumb screw. This raises it, 
this lowers it. So by lowering it all the way, the blade will come off super easy. There's no reason to force it off. That blade is, like I said once before, it's expensive. So take good care of it. So the blade just comes right out. I need to work it off of the wheel. And I'm gonna rinse it completely in tap water because I don't want it to rust. So I actually run it through my fingers. This blade doesn't have any teeth, so it's not sharp. You're not gonna hurt yourself on it. But if you were to let it rust, it could weaken it from oxidation. So best to keep it nice and clean and then set it to dry. You can also towel dry it if you want to speed up the process. I usually hang it over this assembly when I'm done. Take out your sponge, take out your other sponge, rinse them out. I think over time these sponges will get ruined and you have to replace them. There's actually like a groove where the blade ran. So that will have to be replaced. But sponges are really cheap and you can see what size they are. So you can cut out some, some clones of this size. Set them up to dry. Then the motor will lift right off. I would not put this anywhere near water at all, but I can take a paper towel, my last one, I need to buy more, and just rinse it inside here. And that gets everything nice and clean in there so it's ready. And I'll set this aside where it can't get wet. Oh, you might as well see the bottom side too. So here's that PVC splash guard I talked about. And I'm always making sure, you know, think about it, it's been around moisture. So you don't want to like turn it upside down to where if any moisture was in there it could get in. Instead, I'm making it a point to keep it where the motor is right side up and everything else is pointing down. So any kind of moisture would go away from the motor. I set it on a towel here where it won't damage the countertop. And now we're down to cleaning this out. And there's a really cool feature on this container. It's got some sediment and water in there right now. Don't know if you can see any of that, probably not. But there's a hole right here, so I'm gonna pour this out. This is how you drain it. Then all you have to do is rinse it out. Just make sure everything's got a nice clean rinse so it's ready for next time. And no pollutants. Slosh it around a little bit. Drain it out. And you can just set it in the sink to dry or you can towel it down and that's it it's that simple now you can see why i love this saw so much and you can see it's super easy to clean up too next week i'm going to be diving in the dominican republic the uh, hurricane didn't affect the island apparently where i'm going so that didn't get ruined i did all my scuba certification got uh, certified for wreck diving for uh, zombies <laughs> for uh, uh, deep diving advanced buoyancy, nitrox. I got a lot of stuff done in the last week and a half. I've been crazy swamped with all my homework and my classwork and then my actual certifications and they're all done. So I'm ready for my dive. I've got all my scuba gear dried out, ready to go. Uh, so because of that, I'm leaving in the evening on Wednesday. There's not gonna be a video next week unless I sneak something out right before I leave town. And I don't know that I'll be able to even upload anything from the Dominican Republic. We'll see if that's possible. And uh, so you can expect a video the next week. Hopefully some cool stuff that I filmed underwater. I hope to dive a wreck while I'm there. I plan to do a night dive on Friday night and that would be filming critters coming out of the rock work, which should be awesome. Cause usually you just see some fish and some corals doing this in the water and you're just swimming. And I wanted to like park in one spot and see critters come out and film that. That's what I want to do. But I might be overly ambitious. It'll be my first night dive. Uh, and other than that, Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. We are almost at 20,000 subscribers and it's because you guys are liking this content. What I'd like to ask you this week is what would you like me to do in the next video? You can tell me now and I'll see if I can incorporate it in the next one.